Hey guys, welcome back. Eric Kaplan here, Top YouTube Tour Coach. And what we're talking about is Golf Anatomy 101. And what Allie and I are talking about today is the role of the leader left wrist in the golf swing. Um, Allie, of course, is the founder of the anatomical absence in the golf swing, has had her fingerprint within anyone who's talked about golf body mechanics or biomechanics in the golf swing. Um, she, of course, was the first PT to travel um, on the PGA Tour and has uh, helped quite a few major champions. And so again, what we're talking about today is the lead risk. But again, if you're enjoying this video lesson program, if you want to be notified every single time that Allie and I drop another piece of video content, uh, click the subscribe button below. And if you want to be able to dive deeper with us, we have a really special seven day program. That's a customized seven part video lesson series that is based upon how we go ahead and we relearn these new movement patterns using a term called neuroplasticity, which I think that we're going to learn a little bit more about today, but also dive into the role of the lead risk. How many knuckles should you see in setup? And what, in fact, is a fundamental versus what's a variable? So, Ali, I'd love to learn a little bit more about, um, you know, the lead wrist, how it should hang in setup, and how many knuckles should I see? What would constitute a neutral grip? Because I know that what I've heard a lot of, and I've had quite a few debates about this with other golf instructors, which is you want to see two or two and a half knuckles of your lead hand without golf pros understanding that the grip itself is not a fundamental, it's a symptom of the stuff that happens on a more central perspective. And by that, I mean the position of the shoulders. And so we're gonna dive yeah. into a little bit more how there's actually ways in which you can better, what I would say, match up the grip to the posture, which again, will dictate the golf swing. So again, based upon your setup, we actually should all have a little bit of a different grip at play. Yeah, and it, I mean, to my knowledge, there's three basic back in you know, early 2000, there was three basic fundamental grips, and maybe there's a new one. You had the baseball grip and the bargain grip. The bargain sure. grip advocated more pressure with the index finger and the thumb, and then you have your traditional Hogan, where your primary grip pressure is the last three fingers of the left, two inside fingers of the right, and then, yeah. of course, you have a, a neutral grip, a strong or weak. So, yeah. taking it from that point, I'm always going to go neutral if the body, if you can teach uh, a golfer how to move correctly, the proper sequence, using the proper joints to create the effect that they want with the club, neutral is always going to be ideal. But like you said, that's a variable. We have three different types of grip yeah. um, that someone can use. And um, depending on, you know, when they come see a, a golf instructor and somebody who's slicing it, do they need a quick fix, you know, to be able to play a tournament? You can adjust their grip a little. There's all kinds of things that you can do. Um, yeah. To, to adapt to somebody's, if it's a, whether it's a motor pattern or uh, somebody's just, uh, you know, just kind of a habit that they, that they've created or an injury created. A hundred percent. And so I, I definitely feel that the variables to break it down that way, whether it be a okay. Hogan a baseball or a 10 finger or a garden grip, um, that is completely personal preference. You know, I don't think that that plays very much a role at all outside of creating the V's and creating the grip pressure in the right spot in the fingers. Um, but I think that where people miss the mark a lot is when it comes to grip strength. Cause I know that, you know, if I had somebody oh, who yeah. had, you know, very rounded posture and they're going to show a much stronger grip than somebody who is in more neutral. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I, I think that oftentimes it's a mistake for somebody to say to somebody who's very rounded that you have a bad grip without appreciating that the grip itself is a symptom of the fact that they are what you would say out of the box. And so you can get the grip neutral based on getting the shoulder depressed and a little bit more engaged. Right, and so, exactly. And so and that, then that's talking a, about the V, you were talking yeah. about the V, that that muscle that pops up the joint is actually here, way up here. And when yeah. you squeeze that, that muscle, you definitely want that muscle strong. And if you apply pressure, so much pressure from that joint that it makes that muscle pop up, that's yeah. the only absolute to a grip, and you can use that principle with the baseball, with the Barden or the Hogan or 100%. What, right. So that principle absolutely remains. In fact, we do that in all of our golfers' workouts. When they have dumbbells, rows, or doing anything with cables, yep, we keep them in that position because we want to build that muscle into the women's big right. time. Um, the one right there. Yeah, so that, that's the absolute right there. Make sure that muscle's on and – the only thing with that is that Barden grip is very hard, if not impossible, because he's going to apply pressure. So go ahead and just take your thumb, take your other hand, and apply pressure with the end of your thumb. Yeah. It, yeah, so that's really hard to do and still keep that muscle firing at the same time. So, so how, that, how would, that would, be, how would that engaging? Would be for sure. And so how would engaging this muscle 
mitigate a death grip in the golf swing, um, as well as help improve tendonitis or golfer's elbows, what oh we gosh. would say. Big time. We cannot get a death grip on the club. It's kind of like you're either in the rectangle or in the box. You're either right. straight forward or straight back, shift right, shift left. They're, they're polar opposites. So how the body works is uh, when certain muscles turn on, there are other yeah. muscles that turn off to allow that to occur. So sure. this was a hand, hand orthopedic surgeon who showed this to me back in 2006, and I was so excited because I said to him, well, there aren't really any fundamentals in the group. He's like, oh, yeah, there really is. And that's actually where I learned that. So he's Very interesting. Surgeon specialist. Yeah, so that makes you know, a whole lot of sense to me. And, For sure. and, and it works. So you can't get a lot of flexion here at the knuckle. You can't actually get a death grip on the club while that joint is engaged. And you know it's engaged because both you feel it, but you should visually visually be able to see that muscle actually pop up. So that should be fundamental to your setup. 100%. And so what we will do over the course of the program together, and again, as a viewer, they can go and get access to that by going click the link description below. We'll talk a little bit more about the grip. Uh, we're going to talk about exactly the placement of the hands. I mean, do you want the club down here in the fingers? Do you want it in between the palms of the hand? Do you want it underneath the peel pad of the hand? There's actually a position that would be more optimal. But the one thing we do want to talk about as well is the distance from the ball. Because somebody might find is how much, to use a very colloquial term, how much cupping do I want to have in my lead hand? You know, exactly where do I want the left hand in setup? So we're going to talk about yeah. all these pieces and more in the program together. But understand that there's different matchups of the grip based upon the posture and the body that people need to appreciate. And that's where, yeah. you know, over the course so we of keep this going program. Back to the we keep going back to the boxing and posture. It's so it, critical. And to strengthen the muscles to support your torso in that position is so important to our golfers. To do 100%. it properly. That's not and Pilates that, and that's not yoga. 100%. <laughs> and that's where yeah, if somebody is looking for a quick fix, you know, the first place somebody looks at is the grip because, of course, that's the only thing that connects – the body to the club, but the grip itself is based upon the posture first. It is. So it'd be Absolutely. putting the carousy for the horse to look at the grip before saying, this is the form and function of what actually moves the grip to begin with, which I'm really excited to dive deeper with you into our program. And as a viewer, if you enjoyed this video lesson, you want to be notified when Allie and I drop another piece of video content like this, uh, click the subscribe button below. And what we'll do is also put together a link in the description below for you to get access to that seven day course where we're going to break down not just all these fundamentals a little bit deeper, but give the neuroplasticity drills by which you can go ahead and rewire the brain in less than seven days, which I'm super excited about as well. So Ali, thanks so much for, uh, for being here and all the contributions to the game of golf as a whole. Pod being here, I'm going to move it down. A hundred percent. And so that's where, you know, the grip itself, you know, not just as the grip strength based on posture, but what we want to be seeing is we don't want to grip the club here. Cause again, if I go ahead applying centrifugal force in the downswing, we're going to see that club, moving the hand so that's why you would lose it we want to yeah, see I the lose club it at the top on a, oh yeah for sure because if you're at the top in between the palms of the hand yeah, it comes right out of my 100 percent. yeah that's where you also would not want to have it completely in the fingers because then i have too much cupping of the wrist and set up and the hand the handle would be too low which we'll talk about as well so we want to see this just underneath the heel pad of the hand right there and so i'm able to actually so see it's how it's kind of resting Right, right underneath. Here? Yep, right underneath that. Or underneath by this way. Yes. That way I'm able to leverage the club underneath there. I don't want it there. I don't want it in between the lifeline. This would be great for putting though. We want it right there. Okay. Okay. Because that's going to allow me to actually take the club to the top of the swing. Even if the bottom three fingers, using Hogan's analogy, are there where this these fingers don't really matter. If I'm leveraging the pad of the hand, I can bring it to the top and not lose the club. So your primary grip pressure in the left would be your index finger and the pad of the left. Yeah, for sure. And not the fingers at all. Yep. Which again, all right. we're gonna go through a whole lot more together, of course.